Welcome to episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today's featured vehicle, 1965 Ford Mustang Fastback. So far from stock that it's hilarious. This is exactly the kind of car that just gets the comment section going. Some people love it, somebody else is furious. One time we had the Ring Brothers here. Remember they had a, a Mustang with a Chevy engine in it. But that's it, I am not watching this show anymore. I will not put up with the people furious. So I love things that garner controversy. And this will be a controversial car. It's built by Timeless Customs uh, right here in Southern California. Jason Pesagonis, am I saying that right, Jason? That's correct. Come on in, how are you? Good to see you, Good my job. friend. Good nice to see you. A beautiful you build. So tell me the story behind this here. This started out as what? It started out as a 65 Mustang Coupe. Right. Six cylinder car. A six cylinder car, okay. Very original, very clean. Right. Very little rust. Okay. And then we tore it down to the cow. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> so, and you obviously put a fastback roof on it. Car, the car's been changed from a uh, coupe to a fastback, all Dynacorn sheet metal. Um, pretty much, like I said, from the cowl and the A pillar, everything else is. This is probably the most controversial aspect of the car. Could be. Here. Could be. I'm still trying to decide whether it works for me or not. I, I can't decide. I mean, obviously, the build quality and everything is unbelievable, and it's pretty low to the ground. Does it rise up at all? Or it is does that... not. This okay. is right height. That's right height. And what this motor is... do you have? This has a 5.1 liter Coyote in it. Okay, so we're a Ford motor anyway. Ford motor so and Ford. You don't have to deal with you those people. The damn Mr. Leno, I will never watch your show again <laughs> if you ever put a Chevy in you know. And okay, let's do the basics. Brakes uh, look pretty impressive. Look, so the car is called what? The Vicious or Vicious? Vicious. Okay. Yes, it's got 15 and a half inch Brembo carbon ceramic brakes on it. Wow. Uh, the motor's a 5.1 all alloy illuminator Ford motor. It has a set of 68 millimeter precision turbos on it, and then okay. it has a Magnuson 2.3 liter supercharger on it as well, so it's compound boosted. Okay, so you have two turbochargers and a supercharger. Correct. And what kind of horsepower are we talking here? We just made a thousand wheel horsepower. A thousand at the wheel. That seems yeah. to be the new mark. I think so. You know, when I was a kid, that was unattainable. I mean, 427 was the end of the world. Right. Then the Bugatti Veyron came along with a thousand horsepower. Okay. And you have uh, obviously you're not using a Tremec or a manual box. You have a uh, so the paddle car, shifter. The car has an Emco six speed sequential box in it. It's air shifted, shifted very quickly. Um, How many speed? Six speed. Six speed, okay. Yeah. Um, it's fully independent suspension, so it has a Morrison front clip in it with C7 Corvette front suspension, and the rear is their IRS, so it's based on a new Camaro. And how long does a build like this take? We built this car in nine months, start to finish. Oh, okay. There's 10,000 hours in the car. 10,000 hours? Yes, wow. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Even at two bucks an hour. It's, that's, it's that's expensive that's car, expensive right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, and now, what do we have here? Am I looking at carbon fiber? Am I looking at steel? The whole car is steel. Oh, it is all steel. It is. Okay. It's all steel car. Okay. Even uh, the hood. Even the hood. And the aesthetics are really based on the functionality of the car. You, you commented about the fender flares, and the only reason they're there is to accommodate the track width of the car sure. and the suspension. And the, the bullets on top of the fenders, these are because the turbochargers blow up into a boost tube and blow down to the top of the fender and then into the front mount air intercoolers. Okay. So everything's functional. These are the air boxes for the turbochargers themselves. Oh, I see. And this is this is for your wastegate mostly? It's just let allow okay. high pressure out. Get for pressure sure. out. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Why steel? Because a lot of times I see guys will go with, you know, the carbon fiber front ends. Why a, a choice of uh, a steel over carbon fiber or even fiberglass? You know, we wanted to build a street car, right. and we, we fabricate for a living with our hands, so we wanted to do the car out of steel or aluminum. Yeah. Everything on the car is steel or of aluminum. Um, we took into consideration the gauge thickness and everything, so mm -hmm. we tried to minimal, minimalize the, ga the, the actual gauge size to make the car as light as possible. And how many millimeter are we talking? Well, all the sheet metal is either 19 or 20 oh, gauge, okay. Okay. and then all the alloy is, I'd say, about 16 gauge. I remember when the first Lamborghini Murras, the first couple were made, they were so thin, people go like this. <laughs> they leave a handprint in the car, then they went to a little thicker gauge. But this seems uh, pretty strong. So, and what does the car weigh? Any idea? 3,450 pounds dry. Okay. So that's about, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That's an honest weight. I always get people to come by. It's about 1,800. No, it's not. It's not 1,800. It's got to be at least. So I, I appreciate that. And what wheels are the, how, what, what size wheels? Are they 19? So the front is a 19 by 12 and the rear is a 19 by 14. Okay. 19 is about as big as I like to go in the streets. You know, these 22s, you hit a pothole, bang, and your wheel is gone. Got a real short tire on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There's not enough tire. And the interior is uh, 
It's red. Unbelievable. Look at that. I mean, that is red. Yeah, that is uh, lipstick, Marilyn Monroe, look at me, red. Isn't there you it? go. It's unbelievable. But it works. It works. These seats are very nice. What are they? They're Sparkos. Okay. Now, is that... Do you start with their basic like tub and then you upholster them or they just Yes, come that is a Pro 2000 tub and okay. they've been upholstered by us, correct? Okay, and the gauge package is what? So the car has full MoTeC in it. Mm -hmm. So all the wiring, all the PDMs, all the controllers, all MoTeC. All, so that's their, that's their display. Now explain what you mean by MoTeC. So MoTeC is a, wire, is a, is a company that builds not only uh, electronics, but they also have their style of connector. So all the, all the wiring in the car is, is, is wired like an aircraft. It's all very, fi very small, gotcha. thin wire. Like I've got a little Lotus Elan over there. And what we use, we use the speedometer is a satellite. So you pull out of the garage and you're just reading zero. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute. And then once it connects to the satellite. But the nice thing is you're not running it's any wires, you're not running any cable. Very so nice. it keeps it extremely light. But that's not what this is. This is that's running, not. This running off distributor. No, it, it's all, well, there's no distributor. Because I mean, of, yeah, uh, not distributor, but, but off ignition. Correct. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah. And the steering wheel is what? It's a Sparco as well. Okay, all right, wow. The car runs on E85. Um, the reason it does that is because we run 26 pounds of boost in it <coughs> for the most part of it, all the time. You run pure? E85 from the pump. Wow, and is there enough, are enough of those pumps around Southern California? You know, it's not bad. Yeah. Um, the, the good thing is, is obviously you can get away with some substantial boost pressure. Yeah. And, the, and the, all, the other good thing is it's about $2 a gallon. So it beats race gas all day long. Is that all it is, $2 a gallon? Yeah, it's very inexpensive right wow. now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I've got a lot of old cars and I have a problem with the ethanol. It just eats through. It does. Lines, it eats through the early pot metal. I mean, it just... It, it's, it's very corrosive. It's like a nightmare. But in this, obviously, you're using all, what, stainless steel and... So all our, all our fuel system is done either in stainless steel or a Teflon-coated uh, uh, hose. And then the fuel system and everything that's... Uh, or the actual tank, anything that's alloy has been hard uh, anodized. And this is our door pull right here? That is our door pull, correct. Okay. So can you not lock the car? The car does lock. Oh, okay. It'll just, uh, it'll override the door pull. Oh, I see. And how do you lock it with a? Remote fob. Oh, with a remote fob, okay. Cool, can we look under the hood? Of course, Let's see what please. We have here. Now that looks extremely light, the way you just lifted that. It's not bad. Wow, boy, that's a nice looking package. I like this with no, uh, no guard on it. It looks <laughs> kind of cool. You get to Suppose see. like that. I like to open the hood and see things moving around. You know, I hate these cars are open up, and if I didn't hear the audio, I wouldn't know it was running, you know. So most people, what they miss about the fact of this car is, is when they see this, it's, it's very simplistic, but there is a set of turbochargers back here, so you kind of have to look back here and see the, the headers and where the turbos are, are plumb, but the turbochargers are sitting back there in the fenders. So you're back uh, oh, in, in here or yeah. back here? Yeah, back under here, about at the air box. Okay. And like I said, there's a boost tube that runs up the top of these down into the front mount intercooler. And then it runs the front of the nose up into a single, up into the supercharger. I would love to put this on the lift later. Can we do Please. that so people can see underneath? Because Please. that's where, wow. And boy, beautiful detail on the motor here. This is, this is all very nice. Thank you. Is this your piece or is this a Ford piece? That's uh, a factory Ford piece. Oh, on the Coyote motor. Okay, yes, nice. I like that. And what do we have there? What is that? So these are the uh, these are the reservoirs and all the adjustability for the triple adjustable shocks. Oh, I got you. Okay. Wow, look how small they are. That's amazing. Very nice and compact. And then all your heat comes out here, obviously. Yeah, we vented everything through the hood. Try to keep the engine compartment as cool as possible. And what do you want, just standard coolants in it? It does. It's just okay. got some okay. distilled water in it, water weather. Yeah. And what have you done to the motor, piston, crank? So the rods? block started as a, as a 350R block. Right. And then we sent it out and we had it dart and sleeved. So we put a steel liner in the block. It has a manly rod and piston in it. It's got a factory forged Ford crank in it. Uh, the CNC heads are from the new uh, R program as well. So this is a 2015-ish 350R motor. Correct. It's a great motor. To me, this is the greatest motor since the small block Chevy. So this motor does not have the flat crankshaft in it. Oh, it doesn't? No, at this power level, we chose to stay with the standard. Okay. So this is not flat crank. And what's um, your rev limit on it? 9,000 RPM. Oh, you can still go to nine grand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I know I've got this motor in my 350. It, it runs great. You hit six grand, you think you're out of, oh, no, I still got 2,500 more to go. I yes. mean, yeah. It's a brilliant, brilliant motor. Wow. 
Now, will it run on pump gas too or strictly E85? So yes, we have a, part of the MoTeC is it has a computer in the trunk and if you do change the fuel in it, the computer will compensate for it. It'll oh, so you don't have to switch it. anything over? Correct, it just it'll sense it. Yes. Oh, well that's it'll pretty good, so you don't get stuck. You do not get stuck. Trying to track Correct. down a farmer. You Hello? Got, it'll run you know, on 91. By the time his corn crop comes in and you're waiting around, you can turn that into ethanol. And it's a you're full season, there. you're going to be right. stuck. You're going to grow a beard. Exactly. Wow. And just all the fittings. So how do you do this? Do you sketch it out on paper, show the owner what your dream, what your idea is, or you just kind of start working and build it and show him as you go? How does that work? So Chris, uh, we had built another car for him, and okay. it, it was another fastback, and it was, it was very simply, simply and tastefully modified. Right. And after we finished that car, we decided that this one would be everything but that. Okay. So, so it's not tasteful. <laughs> so this car has no taste whatsoever. Well, that's hilarious. This car is an exercise in, uh, in performance for us. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is the kind of detail I like, where everything looks, this looks factory. It looks better than the factory, actually. Thank you. Just the way you check your fluids here. So this one is what? That would be power steering. Power steering, and that one is? Intercooler overflow. The intercooler, that's the oh. water for the heat exchanger okay. and the supercharger. Okay. Very good. The car has oil. Uh, it has an oil cooler with its own fan in it. It has a transmission and a power steering cooler over here with its own fan. So every system is very redundant. And these are nicely done. The those are our friends, the Ring Brothers, provided those. Oh, those boys. They, those Wilbur boys. and Orville? Yeah. <laughs> those boys. We've had Wilbur and Orville, the Ring Brothers, on here many times. They're, they're funny guys. Nice guys. You know what's so funny? I was going to say, I didn't want to say that it looks like a Ring Brothers thing, but that's... It is. So you guys all are not throwing rocks at each other. You all talk to one They're great guys. Yeah, no, they're great guys. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. Okay, let's see. We can close the hood again. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go around to the back of the vehicle. Let's take a look back here. I like the rear tail lights. I like the tip of the hat to the 65 Mustang. That's kind of cool. Thank you. Blacked them out instead of... These were here, but chrome in the Mustang, correct? Okay. Correct. Very nicely done. And center exhaust and big diffuser down there. Uh, got your Mustang uh, black plate. Can we open the trunk? Sure. Okay, you and the wife are not going on vacation in this car, okay? You're not going to get a lot of shoes and, and a lot of winter clothes or anything in here, no. How many gallon tank are we talking It's 26 about? gallons. Wow, that's a pretty good size. And this is your dry sump for your oil? Correct. Quick question, when you're running E85, do you use a different oil? Or uh, you just use standard? We do, this, we're running the car on a Brad Penn race oil. 2050 in the car right now. Um, we do change oil way more consistently because of the E85. Right. Because it saturates and sits it in the does, motor and it? does yeah. get into the fuel. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we yeah. do find ourselves changing the oil more often. Now, most of these modern engines tend to run 040, you know, 540, the real thin, but that's just for environmental reasons, isn't it? Mostly anything else. Does it, is it 2050 too thick for a motor with this type of tolerances? Apparently not, right? I, I guess not. I mean, yeah. it seems to work pretty good yeah, for, okay. for what we're doing. And, and you know, when you make a thousand wheel horsepower, you're asking a lot of that oil. Yeah, I yeah. Think. So we're very happy with it. And how many gallon? Well, that's a pretty good size. I think we run about eight gallons of oil in capacity. Wow. In reserve. Uh, eight gallons, not eight I'm quarts. I'm sorry, eight quarts. Oh, eight, eight quarts. quarts. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a yeah. substantial difference, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we've got a gallon of air that shifts our transmission okay. for us. So you have a compressor that runs, that pumps this up. Right? Correct. Okay. And what is that there? So that's the computer that senses the fuel. So if this car was to be driven somewhere and we couldn't find E85, right. that computer right there, the owner could fill the car with 91 pump, and that computer right there will tell the car that it has 91 pump in it, and it will go to a 91 pump octane tune. Now, when you're going down the road and, you, and it suddenly switches, do you get a, does the car hesitate? Does it, does it hunt to try and find? The or car it, won't hunt. Does it, it seemless? You don't even realize. It just you, knows you have less power. Correct. You won't even notice it, but it will go to a less power tin. Okay. Yes. I, I wonder what the saturation point is. Twenty. I wonder how many gallons of, with 10 gallons of gas against, 50, you know. You know, usually when we're doing that, we're so low. Yeah. Because we want to keep the car in the E85. Right, right. So if you were at that point, I think you would be down to a point where it, it would have a very minimal amount of E85 yeah, in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I mean, the level of workmanship is pretty, uh, pretty incredible. That's heavier than I thought it would be. Yeah, we don't have any spring in it right now at all. Oh, okay. It's it's just just, is this a stock template? It is, Okay. Yeah. Is it really that heavy? It's amazing. Yeah. I just, I'd probably say 35 pounds. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Just everything else is so light, it throws you, you know. 
Now, is the body itself wider than a standard Mustang? It's no, not. You just, just the fender. Just the fender okay. flares, correct. There's so much of it is an illusion. And that, is that the stock piece of glass? It is. It's just that it's flush now. It's so been it, flush mounted. Yeah, so it, it, it appears larger, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you run air conditioning in the car or no? It doesn't. It has heat and defrosting. Oh, heat and defrost. Yes. Okay, there you go. And you got your fire system in there. Correct. Wow, it's pretty impressive. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's uh, something. <laughs> I can't wait to read the comments. You know, people get so snarky. This is a definite comment car. Well, you know, the good thing about it is that when you see the level of work, you can appreciate it. If it was, if it was badly done, I would say I didn't like it. But now it, it, it grows on you. So you go, okay, I get that. Okay, I'm just not used to seeing a Mustang with that wide a flare on it. How much? How much? So that flare's five inches in the rear and about three and a half up front. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And what rear end do you run on this? So this is an Art Morrison IRS. It's based on like a 2010 up Camaro. Okay. And, a, and what's the gear ratio in the rear end? You know, it you, has three sevens in it right now. Oh, three seven. Okay, Correct. that's a nice, uh, that's a nice compromise. Even three sevens you probably get more than enough power. You could probably go to three twenty threes with this. Some thing. three O's. Yeah, 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 three O's. Yeah. And what kind of mileage you get with the 85? It's not great, is it? So we. <laughs> that's a bad sign when they go. <laughs> well, we're not looking for mileage here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, E85, you're going to use about 30% more of it just by volume anyways. Right. So you have that to think about. But I'd say this car realistically maybe make 15 mile a gallon cruise. I have no idea what That's it would what do. That's what you tell the wife. Right. Honey, it's getting... It's, it's only $2 pretty, a gallon. It's, yeah, it's 15 <laughs> miles per gallon. Yeah, it's, 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 no problem. And what do we got here? Is this, is this a matte finish? It is. Okay. This is PPG Global Clear. PPG, that sounds like something I'd say at the schoolyard. What Pittsburgh does that mean? Paint and Glass, oh, I that believe, correct? Than PPG, it just sounds, there you go. sounds dirty. <laughs> it's, it's, don't show them your PPG, okay? It's, it's just keep that off. Keep that covered. Okay, so, and, and what color is it again, you said? So this is Vicious Silver. This is a silver, custom okay. mix. Oh, okay, yeah. so you had this mix for the car. We did. And how many silvers do you go through until you find the one you like? I always find that kind of stuff fascinating. This car was supposed to be blue, and about a week and a half before we got ready to paint it, we decided that the lines just wouldn't show up in blue the way they do now. Yeah, no, it looks good in this color. So I like the stripes. Thank you. Uh, the windows electric or handle? They're not, they're manual. Oh, they're manual, okay. Yeah, yeah you want to keep some of the old Mustang gotta, stuff, gotta, yeah. Gotta keep you want to save out. money. Gotta keep the weight out of it. hours, yeah, you want to do that. <laughs> That's funny. Actually, I would bet the hand wind probably weighs more than the electric motor these days. You know, it could. Once you do the all mechanism the mechanism and all, you're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And center lock wheels, yeah. Those are made for, from Forge Line for us. It's a vicious wheel. Well, it's pretty amazing. Can we fire it up? Can we put it up on the lift and see what it looks like? Please, let's do it. You know, it's raining here today in LA, and this, we, we didn't get any benefit out of driving this thing in the rain, but we're going to show you what the underside looks like as well. So that, that's pretty impressive. Fire it up. Let's see what she Excellent. sounds like. This is not a car you give the valet, okay? have a clutch too. We do have a clutch to start and stop the car. Okay, so you just use your clutch to pull away in first and then the paddle shifter. Okay. You got it. Well, that's interesting. Okay, because I was thinking pure automatic, you know. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. This is more of a race style box. Right, right, right. Well, let's put it up in the air and see what she looks like underneath. See if it's as good underneath as it is on top. Okay, we got it up on our uh, sterile Coney lift here. You, you know, whenever guys come to the shop, they're not impressed by what we're working on. They just love these lifts, and, and they're pretty made, aren't they? Pretty made. He's going, ah, I like these lifts. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about some oh, of the projects? Now? But anyway, we got it up in the air so you can see what it looks. This is uh, the the real proof of how good or bad a build is. You know, a lot of guys uh, don't put it up on the lift because you see that Midas muffler thing there with the bad clamp. You know, uh, this is. Uh, Beautifully. I mean, it's as pretty on the bottom as it is on the top. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. What finish is this here on here? What do so you that's, a, that's like a bed undercoat, like right. a bed liner. Right. Oh, okay. Two it's part a, urethane. It's just so nicely done that it doesn't seem like like that. 
But it's basically like a powder coating or an undercoating? It's just a two-part urethane. It's sprayed okay. at high pressure. Okay, very cool. And what do we have here? Okay. With some Magnaflow resonators. Magnaflow resonators. Just the way she's all put together, it's so beautifully done. Oh, I'm trying to find something the haters can jump on here, but I can't find anything. Excellent. Hang on, let's see what we got. I mean, I just like each nut has the same number of threads showing. That's that's how you know. That's how serious we are. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah same thing here. And this wrap works really well, doesn't it? I like this material. The wrap, yes, I would say the wrap works. It keeps the heat out of the vehicle, too. This is a, this little tiny filter here. Does it all. Wow, that's your f whole oil that's filter. That's oil filter, correct. Wow. Yeah. And you got, obviously, your dry sump runs to the back. So we actually run it through the through stainless hard line all the way okay. down oh, the side Okay, oh, these are all coolers. Yes, we have an oil cooler. And, and you got have, two, right? We have a trans and, 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 oh, a, trans and a power oh, string over there, yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, is this, has this got a fan? Oh, it, it does. does have a fan. They okay. They have their own fans. Yeah, this is what we did on my old uh, three-liter Bentley with the eight-liter engine in it. There wasn't, it's too much motor for the front radius, so we lined the bottom. We didn't do as nice a job with this, unfortunately, as you did here, but it's beautifully done. And what kind of bushing? Are these polyurethane bushings? They are. Or they? Yeah, okay. that's a C7 control arm, and we went okay. ahead and we pulled the stock bushing out and put a new set of energy suspension polyurethane. Do they in. squeak? No, not at okay. all. I mean, in the old days, it used to be, wee, wee, wee. You know, it's like walking with tennis shoes on. It's, you know, it's beautifully done. Look at all, I mean, even the bottom here is, uh, bottom of the A-arm here is, what is that on there? What is that for? So that's a C7 arm, so it is a cast aluminum arm, oh, but okay. it's hollow. So, so it's that's the first Corvette hollow arm. Oh, okay. It's a real lightweight arm. So you got Corvette parts on and your Mustang. Okay, this, uh, going to cause some problems. <laughs> Oxygen sensor there, I got headers. It has independent EGTs on each on each tube yeah, as well yeah. for the MoTeC. And what gearbox was this again? This is an Emco. Emco, okay. We've never used them. I'm not familiar with them. It's a pretty fantastic box. Yeah. You find it mostly in road racing and Grand Am cars. So it's okay. made for a heavy car. And it's yeah. made for a car that makes a lot of power. Okay. It's is obviously it, straight. Is that aluminum cut. case? It or? is. Okay. It's a billet case with a little wow. intersection. Center yeah. force dual dyad clutch in it. It doesn't get much better than this. This is a real top of the line build. And whether you like the design, you don't like the color, that's, that's not the point of it. The point is it is just impeccably done. And, and that's the amazing, the really, uh, really the amazing, the amazing part. I mean, the number of times people bring their car and we put it up in the lift and I see hardware store bolts and stuff like that. And you know, they go, oh man. But this is, uh, this is real, real top of the line. Nicely done. And you did it in nine months. That's what I'm most proud of. Yeah, Our shop yeah. built this car from start to finish, from, from a thought. So how come on some of the TV shows they do it over a weekend? How was that possible? <sighs> you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, Jason, thank you very much for bringing this by. It really is impressive. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the top and bottom of this car. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>